The new official trailer has dropped for Amazon's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power and today we will be doing a complete in-depth breakdown alongside identifying some easter eggs for the latest trailer. Make sure to like and subscribe but without further ado let's go right into it. We first start off with Galadriel placing a helmet on a massive pile of helmets, similar to this artwork in fact titled The Hill of the Slain and saying quote we thought the war at last had ended and one of those battles in this war is happening in this scene from one of the previous trailers with Finrod as well which is most likely one of the major battles of Beleriand maybe Dago Bragolag. As a little easter egg Tolkien Urquhart was able to approximate that there are between 10,074 and 12,300 helmets in this scene alone, so maybe this is from the fifth battle, Nanayath Anodiad, where there were many deaths. We see the similar shot of Linden and then Gilgalad giving Galadriel a crown in the ceremony. And as we have leaked before, whoever is crowned in this ceremony is blessed and instructed by Gilgalad to go west and thus this is the case with Galadriel who isn't too happy about it. This scene and moment happens after Galadriel's failed expedition north to find evil. For example, Fabian McCullum's elven character is in the scene and even in a recent interview, Morvid Clark says Galadriel is the only one that thinks evil is back but then this is contrasted by Gilgalad saying in this trailer quote, Today our days of peace begin. However, Gilgalad in the last trailer states quote, Darkness will march over the face of this earth. So presumably at some point Gilgalad will realise that there is evil at bay. Then at the dinner scene shot we see Durin the fourth, Elrond, Celebrimbo, presumably Galadriel and at the end of the table Gilgalad who doesn't in fairness look too pleased. Interestingly enough only Celebrimbo and Durin the fourth put their glasses up in toast. Maybe this is showing the beginning of their friendship and how this will last until the end of the season where maybe, just maybe, rings will be made between Celebrimbo and the dwarves. The reason of this meeting slash dinner is unknown but one possibility is that this is the meeting is due to the discovery of Mithril which was teased in the previous trailer where during the fourth said this could be the beginning of a new era. And due to this craftsmanship this is why Celebrimbo is particularly pleased as Mithril is pivotal to a region and Nenya the elven ring of power was made of the same material too so it has mighty importance during this period. This shot with the boat flowing down interestingly seems to involve elven children and an insider has suggested to me that this is in fact an important scene that we have all so far currently not paid much attention to. The reason for most not really discussing the scene is because of how little detail there actually is. So the question is what is going on here and why is it apparently so important? If they are indeed elven children this shot must be taking place in Amman and maybe near Tyrion. One crazy speculation is that the boat in this shot and this scene represents Galadriel having to sail west and this is actually a flashback before she gets on the ship and sails west as being instructed by Gilgalad as we know she doesn't want to. So maybe having one of these children be Galadriel is a possibility and this is being used as a callback due to her now having to complete this task even she doesn't want to and that is why we see this little boat flowing down the water which is quite a nice touch. We will fast forward a bit as a lot of these shots are from past teasers but then here in this shot we are seeing potentially our first look at Armenelos which now looks like hopefully a separate city to the seaport city which could be either Romena or Andunai. This place is also the similar city that we see in this shot here as you can see there's the same dome palace at the top over here. Maybe this is the Numenorean throne room. For a second away from the speculation, wow this shot and city looks great. In the actual city from what little we can see due to the quality there seems to be an oval stadium which looks like where jousting could take place for example. 
Next up, we have Miriel and Galadriel, where Queen Regent Miriel says, quote, It is here, Galadriel, the moment we feared. And then she unravels a palante, which visually looks different to the ones we saw in the Peter Jackson film trilogy. A nice little easter egg is that for a split second, which can easily be missed, when Galadriel holds the palante and the visions begin, you can actually see her walking into the visions looking quite confused, which is a quite unique interpretation of how palantes function. The first vision we see is a battle shot, and it's hard to decipher the players in this battle except from of course the orcs, but it doesn't seem like this is a first stage flashback or prologue battle, but instead a potential battle from later in the season and is quote, the moment we feared, that Miriel is on about. It does seem like there are some Numenorians in this battle as well. We then look at an orc walking up to the camera, which seems to be in one of the underground tunnels to protect themselves from the sunlight. Then we get the Finron battle and this underwater shot that we won't get into now, check out our teaser trailer breakdown for all of that. Then for a glimpse we see Finrod at rest on his deathbed, which is actually confirming one of our previous leaks and Finrod does look quite bloodied, and even has some scratch marks on his arms, and even potentially as little easter egg, the mark of Sauron on his chest. The same mark that we see later on here, as if he had been attacked by a werewolf, which of course is in reference to his death at the hands of Sauron when trying to save Beren, which is why he has these scratch marks on his arms. Will we see this happen in this show? Most unlikely. But the question here is, is this happening at the end of the first stage after his death and Galadriel is visiting him? Or is this in the second age, which shows that this death has had a heavy toll on Galadriel, maybe why she's become this warrior figure. Then, we get our first look at these strange characters when the line, quote, evil does not sleep, is spoken. This character in the centre of the hill is in fact not necessarily Sauron at all, and could be a high priestess or Melkor worshipper. Where they are however, that is not confirmed, but some have speculated that these people are in Numenor and setting the foundation for the Melkor worshipping that will later become bigger once Sauron is there in Numenor. This idea is because one of them seems to be wearing a Numenorian helmet, but maybe this is because they got that helmet from one of the battles in Middle-earth that the Numenorians were a part of which we will see later on in this season in fact. When it cuts to the based on the works of J.R.R. Tolkien slide, the Sauron theme begins to play, and firstly we see the white tree Nimloth, and then in that scene one of the petals falls on Miriel, that is from this tree. Is the fact that the petals are falling down a bad omen for Miriel, which is why she looks worried in this scene, which links back to my previous episode theory where I said this might be bef before she has one of her visions of the downfall, if so this would be quite a nice touch but again, is speculation. However, my theory and guess is that their sect is in the eastern region of Middle Earth and may be linked to Meteor Man somehow because maybe they got alerted of his arrival due to his quite cataclysmic arrival. Which is maybe in fact who Meteor Man is trying to fight away in this clip or maybe linked to his purpose. And we know Meteor Man has fire powers due to the scene shown at San Diego Comic Con. So maybe these characters are entangled in the Meteor Man and even therefore Harfits storyline and that is what the Harfits are in fact hiding from. We now cross over to Khazad Doom where Durin the Third hints at maybe Durin's bane underground and the risk of digging too deeply when he says quote, beyond the darkness tempting shadow to bury us all beneath the mountain which is possibly in reference to the Sparrow we see at the end of the trailer, which could be Durin's Bane. So maybe Durin the Fourth wants to continue digging while his father is warning him of digging too deep. Also, in regards to the Barrog, it looks like a spitting image to the Barrog in the Peter Jackson film trilogy, which adds to the confusion around this show in staying in continuity with the film trilogy, as for example the Palantir that we see earlier on in the trailer and the elves in general look quite different, but then this Barrog looks completely the same. 
However, despite me saying that, some have spotted that the horn details of this battle rock compared to Durin's Bane from the Peter Jackson film trilogies does not look the same, with the end of the horn curving inwards, whereas Durin Bane curves outwards. Which leads to the question, who and where is this Balrog if it is not in Moria? Also from the last trailer, we talked about this figure walking in at the bottom left of the shot. Could this be one of the priestesses or part of this cult? We then see Galadriel's eyes open and get up, which seems to be from the big battle from a later episode, with interestingly dust or ash covering her face, which actually calls back to an old interview by Morvid, where she spoke about someone being on set controlling the dust. We can now see why. Could this burning village be Bronwyn's village, as there seems to be a massive battle here later on in the episode and season? Then, we get this shot of a massive castle, which seems to be the fortress where they encounter the ice troll, and maybe where this mark of Sauron is spotted. After we see the mark, we see Theo holding his arm as if something has happened to it or it is hurting, but then a man holds it and creepily says, quote, Have you heard of Sauron? And then when he pulls his hand away, you can see a circular spot and mark on his arm. But then we quickly cut to Bronwyn in a cupboard with an orc approaching her, and this calls back to the quote from Patrick McKay from Empire Magazine where the showrunner spoke about more intimate and close up fight scenes, such as if the orc was in your kitchen, which could be the possible scenario here exactly in fact, quote, what's it like to have an orc in your face, in your kitchen? We then see Theo holding the sword with the mark still there, and interestingly, in an interview Tyro confirmed he found it in a barn, so maybe the mark or touch was given then. But the sword soon starts to grow with the dark mist slash power growing out the sword. Kind of like a Morgul blade from the film trilogies, but this sword isn't one of course. But this sword does have the same mark of Sauron that we have seen two times already in this trailer, so this is its third spotting. We then see the mark again in the same black fortress, and then the elves inside it before they face the troll. The next shot of a ship burning, and many would probably jump to Alqualonde, but it looks like Elendil is there at the moat with its seal door, so maybe if this priestess and her cult is in Numenor, then this is of their doing potentially? Bronwyn begins to narrate, and we hear, quote, Find the light, and the shadow will not find you. And then we see Adar walking in this underground tunnel orc pit, but we only see the back of him, and mainly orcs are bowing to him, which matches our leaks of Adar, where he is the metaphorical father and lead of the orcs, where the orcs worship him. We then see Halbrand in Numenor, whilst Bronwyn states, together we the massive battle that happens in her village, which the Numenorians are also at. Then, as a little easter egg in the village, we see someone hold up a sword that looks similar to Galadriel's sword, or even it's her sword itself. Why would this random person in the village hold it in the air? We then presumably see the Oath of Feanor shot again, which does include actor Anson Boone at the end of the line to the left. Then the shot of Galadriel boarding a boat with her armour, which is presumably her leaving Numenor, which means the armour she received, and we have seen in multiple shops, may have been gifted to her or crafted in Numenor, so she won't have this armour at the start of the show. We then have Ronde at the Teherad Watchtower, who is probably the Legolas of this show, so is doing some cool stunts here on the bridge. Maybe this is happening whilst the orcs led by Adar are walking up the bridge like we saw in the last trailer, and he is trying to stop them. Then when we see the rocks and boulders fall down the mountain, the music playing is very reminiscent to when Frodo and Sam were on the slopes of Mount Doom and Sam makes the decision to carry Frodo and visually both shots are on the mountainside, so that was a nice touch and easter egg. Next we see Muriel walking down holding what seems to be a baby in her hands. And this actually links to one of our old leaks which states Miriel blesses some babies and their new mothers during a ceremony. Interestingly, during one blessing one of the babies, she gets a vision of the downfall of Numenor, so maybe that's what's about to happen here. Then we have Princess Disa leading a choir, and then during the fourth holding some Mithril, which its importance was explained earlier on in the video. 
We skip a few similar shots but then we see Galadriel in the water swimming for her life but then we see a water creature or monster in the background which in fact flaps its massive fin in the water. As a little easter egg, on the second age maps which were released in early 2019, it showed a water creature in the bottom left in the sea, so could this be the same creature that attacks them and this was a hint all along? We then hear Peter Milanas during the third say quote, there can be no trust between hammer and rock. When the shots start to pace up here, we then a look at the Numenorean military in formation and interestingly Halbrand there with them. Then a look at the dwarves in formation preparing for a threat, maybe a balrog. We see Nori holding onto Meteor Man, Aronde fighting an orc, and interestingly Meteor Man getting angry and slashing at the floor. Then Aronde falling into the orc pit, with this orc screaming at him. We get a very interesting look at Vonwin's village, where it looks like an explosion, as there are the effects of a blast and the ground trembling. Interestingly, as a little easter egg, you can see Aronde and Queen Regent Miriel alongside Halbrand in this shot in the village as well, alongside the white Numenorean scaled soldiers. So this definitely has to be later on in the season. Then, we see this priestess blow some fire or do some sort of magic, but then we see a leaf blow in a cave, which actually is not connected to the previous scene. Finally, finally, we hear for the first time what seems to be Joseph Maul's character Adar saying, quote, You have been told many lies of Middle-earth. Whoever he is talking to we do not yet know, but the only slight confirmation slash interaction we have of Adar talking to another character in this show so far is Aronde presumably as they are both at the same orc pit so this might be said to him as their paths would probably cross during this part of the show. In the final shot we have Aronde in some forest or wooded area and we see two claws grab him and propel him backwards into the forest. Most will think this is an orc and there is a very high possibility. However, there is a chance that this is actually potentially an Ent taking him away, saving him from the orcs. We already know that there are Ents in this show, so who knows. Thank you guys for watching, I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. Let us know your most favourite and least favourite moment in the comments below, alongside the best easter egg that you have seen. Until the next video my friends, goodbye.